Hello delegators, welcome to another live stream with Titan Node, the number one place to delegate your stake. Today we're going to be talking about Mark Zuckerberg and an interview he just did with Gary Vaynerchuk yesterday uh, explaining his take on Web3 and live video streaming. So you know that this channel is all about live peer and live video streaming. And what I found was really interesting, I listened to the whole interview and today we're going to go just take a snippet of the interview and kind of just give you guys an idea, um, you know, because you don't want to waste all your time watching the video, we can watch it together and give you a bit of comments on what I think it means when Mark Zuckerberg talks about live streaming in Web3. So let's just jump right into it. Um, I have the video up here. I'll put me down in the bottom right as always. And here is the interview. I'm going to throw on my headset and we're going to watch it together. And what I think you'll find um, is some very interesting topics about kind of the future of where things are going. Um, and I think it's really important to understand where, you know, these thought leaders are, are thinking because it helps us understand what type of technologies will be used in the future. So here, let's, uh, let's just jump in and see how it goes. So this is the interview uh, that was done, I think, only just a couple, maybe 12 hours ago. So let's watch it. What is your just kind of macro thesis of the Web3 place we're going, whether it's the metaverse, the NFT stuff, like what are we on the precipice of and how similar is it to the time where right before Facebook uh, was launched? Yeah, so the, the metaverse to me today feels like the next frontier in social connection in much the same way that social networking did when I was getting started back in, in 2004. And, you know, that's a big reason why we wanted to change the, the brand of the company is that, you know, today, I think most people think about us as a social media company. But in our DNA, you know, we're a technology company that builds all kinds of different technology to help people connect and, and tries to advance human connection. And of course, social media is one important part of that. But I think increasingly, it's going to be about building platforms and experiences that deliver the sense of presence, like you're right there with another person. So there's, you know, of course, all the virtual and augmented reality parts of that, and there's the hardware, and I'm really excited about that, the, the work that, that we've been, you know, I mean, we've been working on that for seven years now at this point, so that's making a lot of progress. Um, but I think some of the experiences are starting to come together too. So, you know, we've, we've started to release Horizon and, you know, workrooms and, and some of these experiences where you can feel like you're present with someone in a place um, it's just pretty crazy to see how um, how that's taking off, and it's you know it's not just games. You know, games I think is the, the natural starting point, but beyond that, um, we're starting to see at this point that social interaction and, and just hanging out is starting to become the the biggest way that people spend time on, on these platforms. That kind of makes sense. And, 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 and Mark so I'll pause it there. What was interesting, what I really picked out there was he was talked about how it's not just games, but it's like this. The metaverse is like this place to hang out and like this this workspace, right? Where you have this like idea of people working online in the metaverse. But in order to do that, if you think about it, you need the connectivity um, of all these different services. So whether you're live streaming with somebody or whether you're in a workspace, you need that level of connectivity. He didn't mention much. He, he talked about Web3 in the sense that like, it's this it's the metaverse whereas web3 in cryptos is more like the decentralized web so i think he you know he mark has a bit of a different i think maybe opinion on web what web3 means but like the whole movement to like metaverse versus and like moving from is really really interesting so you're going to have to scale up all these people that are going to be hyper connected with each other, which is what Livepeer kind of does, right? So let, let's just keep watching. Mark, when you so say far, so when, far. when you say these platforms, are you speaking specifically in the behavior of seeing of people in Oculus? Yeah, yeah, on, 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 yeah. Break, but, break but that. You know, let's 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 actually go right there because you said something in there, and I hope the audience is listening. Seven years, right? And I remember like yesterday, you. By the way, they've been working on this for seven years. Live Peer is currently four years old, right? So, and that's that's when the, the protocol like started development. But the Live Peer token started in 2018, the end of 2018. So, Live Peer token has been out for 
about two and a half years. So just to give you some perspective, like how early we are onto things, Meta has been planning on building out this stuff for seven plus years and we've barely even seen it yet, right? So you have to, I'm thinking you have to be five to 10 years early on this type of technology to really hit the upswing, right? Which is where Live Peer seems to be in that sweet spot of like three, we're at three years now, right? Three to four years. So it's interesting. Uh, acquiring uh, Meta, <laughs> acquiring <laughs> Meta, acquiring Oculus. Oh, always tough to know how to refer to it in the past. Yeah, tense. I'm gonna I'm gonna use both. So stick with me. Um, the Oculus purchase was really interesting because the Instagram purchase, which I was really kind of caught up in because of some of the content I was making, the the attempt on Snap, all of those made a ton of sense because you were executing on the thing that I've always thought you had, which is where's the current attention. How do we play within that space? The Oculus one was weird for me because I was like, ooh, that's far away. Why did he do that? Um, seven years in Metaverse, people are just now starting to kind of get going. What was the thinking of that? Like, why'd you do that? Well, I mean, a lot of it is just that, you know, we spend most of our days building social apps that you use on a little phone. Right. And, you know, as as powerful as that is, you have your phone with you all the time. Um, it's also pretty limiting. Right. You're not delivering a, an experience where you can really feel like you're with another person. And um, in a lot of ways, that's that's sort of the ultimate dream of, of building these digital social experiences is actually being able to make it so that people can feel like they're there together and doing something together and, and kind of collaborating. And, and just no technology that we have today can deliver that. So, you know, we've um, you know, we've seen this progression where you know when I when I started the company, it was you know people primarily the internet was primarily about text, right? So people right. That's type right. text into a into a computer. Then we got phones that had cameras, so the internet became a lot more visual and mobile. And over the last few years, um, internet connections have gotten a lot better for everyone. So now video is really the primary way that we share experiences. So you have this progression from text to photos to videos. Connection and, and expressing ourselves keeps on getting more natural and immersive, but that's not the end of the line, right? There's going to be something after video and it's going to be much more immersive. Um, and it's yeah, so I, I couldn't agree more. Like the web one, web two, web three movement is what he's kind of talking about, right? Like the, the web one being text, uh, you know, in the early, in the late 90s, it's all about text. Then you had photos, right? Which is like the early and mid 2000s, right? The, the spawn of social media. And then you have the 2010s or 2015s and forward. And you have like the the, the spawning of video, right? Um, and so what was interesting, what he said there is like, it's a progression, right? So like all the text and video is, or all the text and images are gonna end up being video and then the next spot, what he's talking about is like VR and AR, right? Which needs huge amount of computing resources, right? Which is what LivePeer is. It's a highly connected network of GPUs that do image and graphic related tasks, right? So um, his thesis and the whole way meta is going is that online universe connectivity and live video augmented reality and virtual reality, right? So, interesting. Let's keep watching. It's gonna be something that, that we can do throughout the day. So you'll have virtual reality for when you wanna go into a really immersive zone. Um, you'll have augmented reality to have holograms. You know, so you, you can imagine a version of this conversation you know, three or five years from now, where instead of doing this um, you know, over video, um, you know, you're a hologram here in my living room, or I'm a hologram in, in your living room. And, Mark, I mean, that's just on, on that point, I'm, I want I want to jump into that. Yeah. Uh, do you think? And I, you know, I've watched you talk in the past, and I know how I communicate this because it's always so challenging. Is your intuition that it is three to five years from now that that is like that the tech between 5G, which was an important step, between th some of the stuff you're doing and other people, other companies and entrepreneurs are doing. Do you think we can actually, uh, did, I saw something I think in my feed where you were fencing with somebody as a part of the announcement, yeah, yeah. which looked wild because it was on some Obi-Wan Kenobi shit, right? Like, the, like, right? Like I was like, oh my God, it's, it's happening. Is that, is that, do you think three to five is 
a, a solid guess? Is that optimistic? Yeah, like, so, talk to me about that. So I think you want to break it down to there's the virtual reality side and the augmented reality side. Yep. VR is is here, right? I think Quest was really the form factor that was necessary to make it mainstream. Quest Two, I think, was a meaningful step beyond that, and and is is um is kind of the first mainstream hit that we've had. Um, so many millions. Was the of them, you know, I don't know, um, that's, I don't know, that's, that's, I don't. I don't know what you're allowed to share or not, so don't feel feel comfortable telling me you can't. Is there public like I'm just trying to learn no, how we much? We don't have a public number yet, but it's um, got it. But it is. Um, you know what I can say is it's 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 many millions, and it's um, and it's multiple times more than Quest One, which which was yeah, sort feel, of the, it feels the it feels that, that way. We needed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that'll keep on improving, and we'll keep on shipping new versions of that. Um, so there are a lot of great experiences there, and it's been really cool to see the use cases there broaden out from games to social to now having things around fitness, right? There's so a lot of fit, uh, that, that caught my radar, that there was a lot more people paying for fitness apps in Quest than I had any clue of. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, well think about it. I'll pause it there just because it, they, they start going into just like a lot of uh, VR, AR stuff, which is like what Quest is uh, currently, you know, it's, it's a lot about fitness, I guess. People putting on headsets for fitness classes and then they talk about like, uh, contact lenses with with uh, chips in them, uh, gu uh, glasses for full on um, holographic and uh, augmented reality stuff. So it, it goes on and on. And then they talk about NFTs for like ever. Um, but what I found interesting specifically here was um, the, the timeline of what they think this stuff is happening. Like it's happening really quick, and you have to be ahead of the curve. Right, so like the augmented, the, the virtual reality, Mark was saying, is here. Right, they have the Quest, they have Oculus, they have these systems already that are are mass produced and are gaining traction. And what's going to be cool is you're going to be able to use these devices for decentralized web applications in the future, and you're going to be able to, you know, connect in this decentralized web when live peer being one of the pieces the infrastructure of video right so the whole purpose of live peer is the to become the open source backbone of the decentralized video web i guess for video right so if you think about it every every device could end up using live peer for its back end video purposes which i find very very interesting and i mean mark's way smarter and way ahead of his time seven years early on the virtual reality stuff that's just landing now uh, he has kind of like this prediction of three to five years before it gets mainstream uh which is kind of like that sweet spot for when live pure gets that mass adoption right so anyway it was just a video i wanted to cover i think it was really interesting you can go check out the whole interview but the rest of it yeah it talks a lot about like Pokemon Go and, and the phenomenon of that and NFTs and stuff. So um, just wanted to kind of do this video and and talk about the latest and greatest of what these thought leaders are talking about. So um, yeah, I'll go ahead and pause it there. And if you like this video, please leave comment, subscribe. And if always, if you want to really help the channel, the best place to the best thing to do is check out uh, the Titan Node Orchestrator and delegate to the Titan Node um, Orchestrator, right? So you can delegate your LPT tokens, you earn Ethereum and Live Peer for delegating to the Titan Node Orchestrator. Uh, you can do that at titan-node.com. You can go check out the website. It's got instructions there. But anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.